So I've got my fuel tank uh, completely sealed and completely assembled with fuel tank sealant. And I've started the, the cleanup process a little bit now that the uh, sealant is completely on. What I like to do, um, and I'll come back to the cleaning here in a minute, but before, after your sealant is on and before you start to bolt everything together, you obviously you want to do a trial fit of the tank one last time. I've noticed that I've got a little bit of interference right here about an inch and a half up from this corner the tank skin is ever so slightly rubbing a little bit on the leading edge skin right here in this corner so I'm going to sand this back a little bit to give it some clearance other than that it looks really good I've got a nice gap along the bottom I've got a nice tight gap along this edge there's no bump between this skin and this skin here all of, the, all of the bolt holes seem to line up really nice across the bottom as well. You can tell when you put it in place, it, it almost kind of locks in place because you've got these counters, these uh, dimples on the skin everywhere along the edges and those tend to nest into the countersinks, the, the mating countersinks underneath. So when it, gets, when it goes into place, it almost kind of locks, kind of settles itself. And you can feel it when you put it down. Well, you can't see now because I've got the plate on. But you can see and you can feel when you set it down that, that these Z brackets do in fact kind of seat right onto the spar. And the, these holes look like they're lining up really nice. I'll go around to the back side. I've not um, checked the back side yet. I have to go over it a little bit uh, in more detail make sure that all these seams are correct and they're not overlapping so now on the back side again all the holes look like they're lining up really nice uh, there's no interference on this corner there's an ever so slight gap between the two skins going up I can see and I can feel there's no overlap I have to look at this a lot closer. It's annoying to try to look at and hold the camera at the same time. But anyway, let me um, let me get this back off, and uh, I'll go over the cleaning a little bit. You want to make sure um, I just put the baffle on, which is in here. So when you do your cleaning. You want to make sure you clean all the fuel tank sealant off. That's going to interfere between the fuel tank and the spar or the fuel tank and this uh, attaching strip. Anything that, any fuel tank sealant that's going to be between the tank and whatever the tank mounts to is going to be a problem. Um, it's going to give you fits because it's not going to want to fit right because you've got fuel tank sealant in between the areas where it shouldn't be. So that's the kind of stuff I'll talk about here in a minute. The areas you want to make sure you keep really clean after doing your fuel tank sealant, as I said, are any areas where there is the, the fuel tank skin actually mates to something else. So this area in here where the uh, attachment strip lies, you want to make sure that this has no fuel tank sealant on it. You want the back side of all your countersinks nice and clean so they nest the way they should. You want the front side, this side of your countersinks, nice and clean so the screw head will nest nicely. Um, this edge in here, this flat area in here, this is where uh, the spar will be. And you know the spar is pretty thick. It's, it, it goes into here pretty deep. You want that area in here free of fuel tank sealant and again the dimples both on this side and on this side you want clean so everything will nest and bolt together nicely these flats the mating areas of your Z brackets you want those free of fuel tank sealant anywhere like I said anywhere where the fuel tank is going to mate to a different surface you want those surfaces to be nice and clean even the edge, even, even this very edge 
of the skin you want to make sure does not have fuel tanks sealed on it because this edge is going to nest up against the other edges of the skins or be very close and if you got globs of fuel tanks sealant on here it's not going to sit the way it should so just make sure you've got all your edges clean all your flat mating surfaces clean your dimples things like that so this tank is almost ready to go um, I, I have to finish cleaning it it's really it's got a film all over it and I got some more fuel tank sealant to clean off and then I'm going to come back and um, put the fuel tank sealant, sealant over all the shop heads through here and I'm going to put a blob over top of all the pop rivets in here and the same on the uh, these brackets here both sides I'm going to put fuel tank sealant on these rivets on this side and on this side as well so that's it clean it up do the rest of the fuel tank sealant and um, hopefully that will be it boy to be done with fuel tank sealant is kind of nice but all in due time so this is my setup for pressure testing my fuel tank. I've got, let's see, I've got the, uh, the fuel drain in place here. I've got my balloon attached to the uh, large fitting that's on the access cover. This would be the uh, fuel line in. And then I've got a, an AN cap on the vent line. On the other side, which I'll show here in a moment, on the other end, I've got the, uh, the filler neck capped with a rubber plug. I'll show that here in a minute. So right now the fuel tank is completely finished. It's completely sealed and I've got all the open ports plugged. I'm going to get ready to pressurize it using this balloon just as an indicator that it has some pressure in it. The way that I attached the balloon was I simply put the balloon over the fitting and then I put a uh, tie wrap around it and pulled it tight and then I wrapped the entire thing with black electrical tape. This seems to hold fairly well. Um, of course I'll find out when I do the actual test with the sudsy water but it seems to work somewhat. Um, I don't expect it to hold pressure for days on end. I just want to make sure that I can get pressure in the tank and none of the uh, seams or rivets and things like that leak. So that's kind of what I'm going for. So at this point, the easiest way that i found to uh, blow this thing up is to do just that through the, uh, the vent fitting. So, or I mean through the, uh, the uh, drain fitting. So I'm going to do that now and see what happens. I always pull on this just to make sure that that's reseated. So there it is. See how long that lasts and while it's uh, pressurized I'll start spraying it with the uh, soap solution to see if I've got any any joints, seams, or rivets leaking. So let me go around here. There's the plug. It's just a rubber um, stopper. It's got a number 11 on it. I believe that's somehow related to the size, but um, that fits really well and it's just pushed in here. So now I've got I've got towels down on the floor. I'm going to take this entire assembly with the uh, with the cradle and I'm going to lay it down here on the towels and then I'm just going to soak it with this uh, soap solution that I made up with dishwashing liquid and uh, we'll see if we get any leaks. 
Here's the tank uh, thoroughly rinsed with uh, soapy water solution to check for leaks, looking for bubbles, and um, thankfully I don't have any. This is uh, just like the other tank. Uh, there doesn't appear to be anything bubbling. Um, this solution is just dishwashing liquid in water, so it's kind of it's kind of foamy to begin with, which I don't really care for too much, but you can tell if you have a leak because you'll see bubbles actually coming from whatever is leaking. And I don't see anything puffing at the moment. I do have a leak, if you want to call it that. I am not concerned about it because it is right here at the fuel vent or the fuel drain and I didn't put anything on these threads I just turned this in by hand and then I put a wrench on it and tightened it down a little bit but you can see there's air coming out of the bottom of it you can see those bubbles coming out and I expected that I'd have been surprised if it didn't leak because I didn't put anything on the threads so that appears to be the only active leak point um, other than that, everything looks to be nicely soaked, but uh, no active bubbles. So I'm just going to let it sit for a little bit. I had the balloon on it yesterday. With I didn't spray anything down. I just puffed it up, blew it up with the balloon, and it sat um, overnight and all day until about uh, 4.30 this afternoon when I checked it. The balloon was quite a bit smaller. But I expected that because I don't know that this seal here is perfect. Obviously this is not. And the balloon itself for all I know could leak. So I'm happy with it the way it is. I'm going to give it another once over. And then uh, I'll probably start drying it up. And uh, trying to get some of the soap off of it and get the floor cleaned up. So that's that. Uh, next step, once it's cleaned, will be to uh, install it on the spar up there next to the rest of the leading edge and uh, I can start working on the top skins. This is my finished fuel tank. It is ready to be installed on the uh, wing itself. So as you've just seen, this tank has been completely sealed it's been completely uh, leak tested the best that I can do with what I have. I tested it originally without the rear baffle in place, filled with water as full as I can get it, and there were no leaks. And then I drained it, let it dry really well, and then um, put the rear baffle on with the Z brackets as you see here, and then put the, uh, the ports, the plugs on all the ports, put the balloon on, pressurized it with air, and then sprayed it down with uh, some sudsy water. And again, that did not appear to show any leaks. So I'm calling this tank complete, and it's been cleaned. I've got uh, some tape over the filler neck, and as you may have seen, I've got the ports capped here and here. These are just hand tight, not even, just to keep uh, insects and dust from getting in the tank. So that's it. This is done. I am now going to throw it up on the wing and uh, I may even put a few screws in it just to see what happens. So next up I believe are the uh, top skins.